Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at HSTWB installer for the classic Amiga. So as the website says, it's all about automated installations of Amiga Workbench. So that's 3.9, the latest 3.2, and going back to the old 3.1 installation. Why is this useful? Well, it includes a lot of extra things and the workbench installations that I've shown in the past, they've been quite manual. And if you're after a quick solution and really you don't want to dive into all of the details and enjoy the journey of installing Amiga Workbench, then if you're interested in just getting to the destination of getting a perfect workbench installation, then you're going to be interested in this video. Now, if we go to download, to begin with, I recommend going for the pre-built self-install images with the 4 gig version. Okay, so that's finished downloading. So let's go to our downloads. And then we've got our zip file. So let's extract that. I tend to use 7-zip because that tends to be uh, the best uh, extraction tool. Excellent. So if we go into here, We've got our folder and we've got a load of files in here. So uh, you can double click on the guide. And what this will do is it will open up a web page uh, that goes uh, to uh, this chap's uh, uh, GitHub page. And there's a load of instructions on how to set this up. So uh, preparing the uh, self-install. So what we've got to do is we've got to copy over a load of files. So let's start that first. So if we go into the folder, we've got Amiga OS. And as you can see, we've got different versions of Amiga OS in here. So for today, I'm just going to do plain, simple Amiga OS 3.1. So uh, let's go into there. And then you can see there's a readme text and basically this says, right, okay, you've got to copy these files over. So um, this is part of your Clanto uh, pack that you may have, or you may have got these um, disks from somewhere else. Uh, public documents, Amiga files, there we go. And it's under shared and then ADF. So I need to copy um, all of these disks that I've just highlighted here copy and then let's paste them into this folder so i've pasted it into the amiga os 31 folder brilliant so that's done let's go back and back again and now i'm going to go into kickstart and yet again another readme um, and as you can imagine yep we, we've got to copy over our kickstart roms so i'm going to be copying over my 3.1 roms so let's do that so let's go to shared, go back to ROMs. Let's find my 3.1 ROMs, let's copy them all over. I know I'm copying more than I should do, but it doesn't matter as long as you got the key A1200, A600 ones, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, kickstarts are copied over. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we've got a WinUAE installation. Now, if you've been following previous videos um, with me, then you've probably got to the stage of you've got WinUAE and you, you've been playing around with it. Um, if you haven't, then uh, quickly, I'd recommend that you just go to winuae.net, uh, download uh, either the installer or the zip archive version, and then Download that, basically open up WinUAE so it does a quick configuration and then it's it, it's set up with some uh, configurations. So I've got WinUAE set up over here and I've got my folder with HSTWB. So what I need to find now is the file that is HSTWB underscore image setup. So this is a script that basically looks at all of these folders and everything and does a load of magic to uh, basically give us a UAE uh, configuration profile ready for WinUAE. So um, let's double click on this CMD command line, load a text 
pops up. Don't worry about that. Just click on uh, continue and then uh, that closes. And basically then what we can do is we can move this UAE profile over. So I'm going to open up Win UAE, and then I'm literally just going to get this config, drag it over, and then you'll see that all the settings change, chip set, uh, the ROM set. If we go to hard drives, this is all pre-configured. And as you can see, yeah, it's, it's set all of the paths and then we're ready to go. So if I click on start, we'll just wait for this config to load up. Okay, and basically we've got a nice welcome message. So it's saying uh, press enter to continue. And then what this is gonna do is basically say, right, okay, you need some Mega OS files. We've already transferred those over so we can continue. It does a scan, detects that we've got Amiga OS 3.1 Workbench ADF, so we continue. And then um, basically continue again. And here it says, this is, this is all the available packages that you can choose from. So we've got better Workbench. Um, I think we're gonna do that today. Um, and basically you click on where it says continue with 19 packages available. Okay, so next question, do you want to do a MD5 only or MD5 and mount ADF to detect the Amiga OS files? MD5 is fine with me. So we'll wait for it to detect all the ADFs that we've got, there we go. And it's all automatically detected, yeah, we've got Amiga OS 3.1. Obviously, if you copied a different version of Amiga OS, that will appear here. So you've got two options. Now, this could be a little bit confusing because you might think, oh, I want to uh, I want to install it from floppy disks. These are real floppy disks, so no. Um, we need to choose the option at the top. So install Amiga OS 3.1. Do you want to continue? Yeah, I'm really sure I want to do this. And then we just wait for it to detect. Yep, it's detected all of the uh, ROM files. So 1.3, 1.2 that I copied over. Install uh, install the five kick ROM files. Do you want to continue? Yes, I'm sure. Then it loads up a user packages. Now, this is the really cool thing with this uh, HSTWB is that we can start to customize our Amigo installation now. So there's 21 packages available. So this is basically listing all the packages that are available at the moment. We don't choose them just yet, but this is just listing all what's available. So uh, some really useful packages here. So we just click on continue. Okay, I yep, yeah, I want to still continue. Okay, and then it says the self-install is ready to start the installation process. So this is the last chance to change anything uh, that we want. Are we really sure what we want to do? And I'm just gonna say, yep, yeah, uh, enter to continue. So there we go, it's installing Amiga OS 3.1. That's done, lightning fast. Uh, it's copied over our kickstart files, fantastic and then it's going to reboot the system. So let's do that. Let's wait 10 seconds. And here we go. We've now rebooted and we've got a package installation appeared. So uh, select uh, package filtering is Amiga OS 3.1. So it's only showing the packages that are compatible with this version of Amiga. And this is where you can choose what you want. So um, if I click on better workbench, you'll see that it changes to an install. So that is going to install. Um, uh, so I want better workbench. Um, I would like, uh, I think that's all I want bait, uh, at the moment uh, out of this. If obviously if you want Picasso 96, um, you can install that as well. Actually, let's do that. Let's install Picasso driver. Uh, it's always useful. So better workbench is going to be installed. And then at the top we go start package installation. Yes, I want to install those two packages. So there we go. We're just waiting for that to install. Uh, do you want to update the screen display to? No, I won't do that yet. 
just just to save on on the resolution i want to make sure that you can all see this um and then installation is complete press enter to continue now we get onto the user package installation so what do we want to uh, choose out of this well i like directory opus so let's choose that um if you're putting this into a real Amiga, the compact flash and the fat 95 stuff might be useful. A uh, whole bunch of archivers um, and unarchivers, they're always useful to have. Full palettes, that's handy uh, for just fixing your colors. Uh, MUI 3.8, yep, yeah, let's install that. Um, I tell you what, I want iGame. Let's install iGame. Just click on that. I want the iGame um, dependencies as well with that. Uh, Sysinfo. Everybody loves Sysinfo. Um, and I want the latest version of WHD Load. So there we go. We'll have that installed as well. Now, you can also have the WHD Load packs, but I'm going to do that in a separate video and show you how if you've got a whole collection of WHD load games, um, how you can basically get this to copy all your games across and everything. But I'm going to leave that for another video. So um, I've got all the packages I want. So if I scroll up to the top, start user package installation. I've chosen nine of them. Choose yes. Uh, LHA CPU version, I'm going to put um, 020. 020 for that one as well 020 and 020 there and 020 for that one as well and then this is a nice thing what's the global key that you want to use for whd load i always like using f10 but it's totally up to you which key you want to use and there we go it's all installed so if we press enter to continue now, basically, this is going to say um, it's going to reboot in 10 seconds and then it's going to boot into the finished system. So this installation of Workbench is actually working out to be much quicker than uh, what if we'd done all of this manually and had to download the packages off of Aminet. And, and it's, it's really useful to get a quick Workbench set up as fast as possible. So there we go, our workbench is loaded up and as you can see we've got a whole ton of stuff here. So we've still got some uh, hard drives that are showing but we've got our workbench and if we go into our workbench we've got applications. If we have a look in there, let's, let's tidy this up a little bit. We've got directory opus, um, so directory opus is actually out here at the moment. So directory opus, that looks brilliant. And sysinfo, oh, sysinfo is also, uh, yeah, on the desktop. There we go. Got iGame as well. If we're going to work, we've got a three gig partition as well for putting a load of our stuff in there. Uh, the workbench partition is 250 meg. And basically, I've got all the applications that I said that I wanted it to install. We've got WHD load as well um, installed. And Basically, we can carry on with this workbench setup and customize it, but it's a great starter um, for, for quickly getting started on Mega Workbench. Now, you're probably thinking, right, let's close that down. What if I've got a real Amiga and I want to do a setup um, and actually put this into an A1200? Well, basically what you're gonna do, if we go back to our folder that's uh, got all of our HSTWB stuff in it, this 4GB file .hdf, this is your hard drive file. This is got your workbench set up all in it. And basically you can use a tool like the Raspberry Pi imager, select that hard drive file and copy it to a SD card, bung that into your Amiga and away you go. Or what you can do is you can go into WinUAE, then uh, basically go to Quick Start, choose your A1200, give it um, a load of memory, and make sure you've chosen the 3.1 A1200 ROM. And yeah, let's give it a load of RAM. 
let's do 32 bit addressing so we can use the z3 memory 128 megabytes uh, let's give it a cpu with jit compiler fast as possible and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add that hard drive file so let's add um, let's go to my downloads into the HSTWB folder. There's our four gig hard drive file. And then click OK. Let's start up this Amiga. And there we go. Yeah, there's our installation. Okay, so it's that easy. Um, I hope you found this video really useful. Um, let me know if you want to see um, more videos about this. Um, I plan to do Amiga OS 3.2 installation using um, HSTWB and as well as I said previously I want to show you how to get the um, WHD load packs of games as well automated into this. So uh, thank you for watching and I hope I see you in another video. Take care everybody.